Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I want to talk about autistic fatigue and burnout. So I think that it's important that people understand what fatigue and burnout are like and I think that it's not really talked about as often as it maybe should and it's not as well known. I mean it's not exactly a well known autistic trait or experience so yeah I thought I would talk about it. So um, I'll talk about what burnout is, what it feels like, um, signs of burnout, what causes it, what you can do about it to prevent it or you know make yourself feel better and how you can support somebody who's going through burnout. So what is burnout and fatigue? I mean fatigue is basically just an extreme physical and mental exhaustion it's yeah very intense exhaustion that isn't relieved by sleeping you know you can sleep and sleep for i don't know 12 hours straight and you'd still feel exactly the same so it's not really caused by a lack of sleep it's just basically being emotionally drained so you know the, the signs of burnout are as i say being extremely fatigued brain fog that makes it really difficult to think clearly your brain just feels scrambled and jumbled and you can't think clearly it's just like everything's been mushed together it's difficult to concentrate on anything you know focus and attention span is kind of non-existent for me at least um, it, it is as I must say it's different for everybody um, these, this is just, you know, some of the things that people could experience when they're burnt out. So, yeah, it's difficult to concentrate. Motivation is, you know, down to zero. Really hard to motivate yourself. You know, your to-do list is growing and you've got things to do, but you just physically cannot bring yourself to doing what you need to do, which is then very stressful and does not help the situation. It can affect your ability to complete everyday skills and tasks that can become difficult things that you would normally be able to do when you're feeling okay you can't do or you do extremely slowly so it could even be getting up and getting dressed which could I don't know let's say normally it takes you like 10 minutes to get out of bed and get dressed um you know if you're burnt out and you really don't have that energy it can even take up to like half an hour to an hour just to persuade yourself to get out of bed and get dressed because everything it's like everything everything is so slow it's like you do everything in slow motion and that's what it feels like for me um it's difficult to communicate communication skills are affected you know even people that you normally talk to your family and your friends if you're feeling like this and you just don't have the energy um to do it but you know even if you want to you just speech communication it just takes too much energy you just don't have the energy basically it just affects your overall functioning and it is extremely unpleasant and it's a very real thing it's not just it's not just being a bit tired it can really make you feel quite ill you know you can feel sick you can have a headache you can just feel weak lethargic it's it's a very real thing and it should never be underestimated so what causes burnout well i think overall life as an autistic person is really difficult because we are in a minority group we are I don't know is it like two percent of the population i think roughly so yeah the other 98 percent are not autistic so obviously the world isn't made for us and everything is very difficult um you know everything's much more overwhelming uh, sensory overload social interactions it's, it's all just too much the brain is processing everything you know for me i don't have i don't have a filter my brain is literally taking in absolutely everything all of the time and that uses up huge amounts of energy resources um masking that's hiding your autistic traits a lot of people do that and that is a huge cause of uh, burnout because you know pretending to be somebody else and hiding who you are that is very difficult and it takes a lot of energy not having your needs met that's just not very nice you know we all deserve to be supported 
Um, but yeah, having your needs unmet or not being supported is one. People putting demands on you that are just too much. Um, getting too stressed and having a meltdown. I mean, meltdowns are exhausting, so that can burn you out. Um, just general life. I mean, the causes are different for everybody, but there are lots of different reasons for burnout. So what can you do about it? Now, that's the big question. Um, the most important thing to do is to, you know, over time you begin to learn what burns you out and what gives you energy. Um, you can have two lists. One list is what depletes you. And one list is what energises you. And then you can try and balance your activities based on those lists and try and make it so that, you know, you're, you're, you're not doing too many activities that deplete you. But that's very difficult. I mean, I do try and do that, but to be honest, it, it's really hard because a lot of the time I don't, I don't know which ones, de well, I know which ones deplete me, I suppose, and I know which ones can help re-energise me, but then it's, I think, the, well, the problem I have is that for me, burnout doesn't just come on gradually, it just hits me, just like that. I mean, I can literally wake up one morning and be fine, and then something can happen in that day, and then that can literally put me straight into burnout and I could be in that for a month or a couple of days or you know like there's no warning it just it just comes on I mean maybe other people have more warning I'm not really sure but it's that's the hard part I don't ever know where I am on my energy scale or like how close I am to burnout but yeah that's good and then there's um, it, um it's good to yeah respect your limits and sort of have those have those lists that's a good thing to do. And then there's energy accounting, which does link into that. It's basically, um, you know, planning your day based on your tasks and make sure you've got some tasks that energise you in with the ones that um, deplete you. That's important. Making sure you allow yourself to just be your true autistic self where you can just, you know, stim, engage in your interests you know, be somewhere that's respecting your sensory needs, somewhere it might be somewhere quiet, somewhere with all your favourite things like soft blankets or fidget toys or uh, weighted blankets or any sensory things that make you feel good. Making sure your needs are being supported, you know, getting the right support, that's really important. Having somebody who can support you and make sure that you are getting getting the, the support you need, really. Um, yeah, I think there are lots of different things that can help, you know, I mean, sometimes if you're burnt out, you literally just need to take a couple of days off from school or work or whatever you're doing and just literally rest. And that's OK. That's fine. You know, people often think, oh, you know, you're only allowed to take time off if you're physically ill or you've got an actual, you know, flu or temperature or something like that. But actually that, you know, it's absolutely fine to take time off if you're feeling burnt out because it's, it is a real thing and you know you you can feel a bit guilty but you know if you're feeling ill regardless of what's causing it or you're not feeling good it's, it's completely fine you know you've got to do what makes you feel good but sometimes that's really important and sometimes you just need to have a bit of fun so you know sometimes it might be I've got to lie in bed for a day in the dark with no people no sound no nothing that's okay and then other times you might you know you, you know you might want to go and do something but do something that you know makes you happy so it's it's not necessarily about doing nothing it's about doing what makes you good what makes you feel good and that's super important if you how can you support someone that's burnt out or fatigued or just feeling this first of all just be understanding I mean you know if you're a neurotypical it will be difficult perhaps to understand this but just try and understand that it is a real thing and it, this person is really not feeling good and they need support and they need care and they need acceptance basically um, allow that person to have space you know don't put too many demands on them try and help them as much as possible try and you know make sure they're okay and maybe help them to do things that make them feel good just be overall accepting, you know, you know, for example, if you've got a child who's burnt out because school can be really um, draining for autistic children. A lot of children come home from school and they either melt down because it's just too exhausting and draining at school. And then that can lead to burnout or it's very common for autistic children to come home and literally just go to bed and go to sleep after school because they just need that rest. So, you know, allowing 
them time just to just to you know be calm and be quiet and just yeah allowing them that time it all just comes down to acceptance and understanding i mean that's all you can do um just remember it won't last forever it will go away i mean it can last anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks months years i mean it can go on and on and on if it's not addressed but it will go away and it will improve and when you're feeling like that i know i do i feel like it's going to last forever and i just can't ever imagine feeling myself again but it will come um i can definitely assure you it will you know you, you will feel better um so for me what causes it for me? I mean, yeah, I have all of the, you know, all of the signs. I said I have that, the brain fog, struggle with concentration. My basic skills are, are very difficult. Um, for me, it's caused by, oh, transition. That's a really big cause. Um, you know, that's change, transition. That's really hard. That's one of my major struggles. You know, new things, you know, just moving on. The uncertainty, uncertainty is a huge drainer because as an autistic person I need to know what's happening and if I don't know what's happening then I just it really does just take a massive toll on me um stress anxiety meltdowns they all burn me out too much sensory overload new experiences new places oh there's so many causes and it is impossible to avoid it um unfortunately it's just a part of of my life but hopefully over time I will you know I'll get better at um I know what causes it, but I, it's, I don't often know where I, where I am or how close I am to it or what I can do to make it better. Um, all the time, it's very difficult. So, yeah, I mean, I hope this video has been helpful. And, you know, if you've got any more questions, then ask me. You know, I'm completely open to questions. I've hopefully just given you a good overview of what it is and um, how you can support a person through it and how you can support yourself but anyway I really hope it's been helpful and thanks so much for watching and I will be back very soon